My name is Jen Mora, and I have the pleasure and privilege of being Kalita Rawls' artist liaison here at Lehman Maupin. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for this very special conversation between artist Kalita Rawls and curator, writer, and podcast creator, Fola Shade Olagundudu, on the occasion of Kalita's exhibition, A Certain Oblivion. A Certain Oblivion is on view through December 16th, and we hope you'll return to the exhibition again before it closes. Before Kalita and Folashari jump in, I want to share that you can listen to the two in conversation in a forthcoming episode of Folashari's podcast, Everything is Connected, which I think is scheduled to come out on Wednesday. And you can view Kalita's work next at the Perez Art Museum in Miami in her first museum solo show, which opens this June. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you to Kalita and Folashari for your time today. Thank you, Jen, so much for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Kalita. I'm so happy to be in conversation with you today. Ah, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Lovely to have you all here. I'd like to go in and jump in and get started right away. So, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. good. Had a great opening. It was so busy. Packed house. Yes. Right? There was a lot of people here. Got a lot of love from a lot of family and friends. And I appreciate all of it. Love to see everyone celebrate you, and that was such a beautiful opening. So let's go into some of the first things that I'd like to ask you today. I'd like to break up the conversation into three parts. And the first part, I'd like to talk a little bit about the technical aspects of your work and some of the inspirations that you draw from other artworks and other artists. I'd like to talk right now a little bit about some of the paintings that we see in this room and some of the other artworks that have inspired them. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Yes. <laughs> um, when I, well, I'm going to go into the process first. Sure. That's okay. Um, before I begin, I do a photo shoot, a, a, a whole photo shoot with um, taking more like four or 500 pictures um, of my subjects. Um, in this body of work, my subjects were two of my daughters, my two youngest. Sienna and Sage. <laughs> um, but it became a whole family project. It was like my oldest daughter was my photo assistant. My husband was there and my uh, studio assistant manager friend was also <laughs> there. So I, um, I took a lot of pictures at night thinking of these uh, dark moments which we can go into. But um, when I was doing that, some of the images resonated with me and I started to think of works um, from art history. There was one image of my daughter, Sage, that I kept thinking of Edward Monk's Madonna. This one over here, above yesterday, beyond tomorrow. It was the sunken eyes, maybe, it was like something about the face or the blurriness of it, um, but I wanted to push it further. It, it's not the same subject that he pushed here, you know, in that painting, she's nude, but it was also like this woman figure coming, you know, out. And it was, when I saw that, there were certain elements that I kept seeing, like in that piece, she has like this red halo over her head. And so I kind of did an ode to that in a way with a halo of light in her hair. But it, we weren't talking about the same subject. But something about it resonated. And I think sometimes a lot of older art pieces seep through. I spent a lot of time um, in Philadelphia with my father going to museums. You know, um, we'd go to the Philadelphia Museum, the Rodin Museum, the Broad, uh, and those images, I think, are in the back of my mind um, that I saw in those that time, or even with my mom who loved Mary Cassatt, and I just imagine that book out, or my mom would repaint Mary Cassatt paintings, and I think of that with the women and the imagery. So all of that, I think, is in my subconscious. I love that you've offered that 
deep description and share that with us because you know you and I had a few conversations prior to today the podcast other conversations and you talked a bit about the journey that you feel is being depicted in these 10 paintings right there are things that are happening that might be metaphorical or sequential and your subjects are going somewhere. They're moving somewhere. They're in a space and there's movement happening, not only with the water <clears throat> and their bodies and their dresses, but also from a consciousness kind of standpoint. Can you talk a little bit about that, that journey that you see your daughters going through in, in the show? Yes. Um, even though I can go into the ideas I had to make the pieces, I don't want it to sound like I'm illustrating them because I want other people to bring their own experience and ideas to them. But um, I'll just say it all began when Roe was overturned and I was in between a state of rage and disappointment. I don't know what that adjective is or feeling. And I had to put that energy somewhere. Uh, and all I kept thinking of this dark moment, I feel like we're in spiritually, culturally, as a community, and um, I knew I wanted to do these dark waters. And when I did that, I did a photo shoot, as I explained at night, and um, I don't know if it was myself or my trusty photo assistant, my daughter Skye, that took this image over here, um, and I don't know if you could see what is there, which is kind of imp not that important to me. I kind of like that you can't see what it is because that obscurity is kind of a part of it, but I'll share <laughs> and then you may be able to see it. Um, I'm not sure which one of us, myself or my daughter, took this picture of my assistant, Tony, <laughs> and she was in the water and she was holding herself and I got this image from above. And something about it, of her holding herself, I put it in um, that photo, uh, that Adobe program, Lightroom, and I darkened it all the way down. And once it got so dark, it became primordial to me. It became otherworldly. I saw a space and time. I saw a beginning. It made me think of the Hubble pictures of space being made and something about that like this beginning in this darkness and that's where there's where light begins you know then once i painted that i kept thinking of um you know there's so much conversation about the life in the womb that kept happening and I was thinking about bit about the life outside of the womb and the and the growth that continues to happen and is impeded if we don't have choice and that is why I painted one of I had all these images of my daughter in motion and I wanted to paint that outside of the water in this motion and this kinetic and this growth of who she can be and who she wants to be in this piece which I entitled Like Other Gods with Ancient Rage. And I feel like if this was... What a name. What a name. If it was uh, a video, it would be steam coming out because that's how I felt. Uh, and then, you know, as I'm getting all of this energy out, it was like almost amen. And I could breathe out and she moved on here with and so it be. And with and so it be, it's like this light is coming from beneath her or through her. And she's moving toward this light. And I know I'm saying it like these panels of illustrations, but these were just the thoughts that, you know, that were resonating. It would make me choose them and even think of, you know, uh, how I saw them. And then it was um, above yesterday, beyond tomorrow. I feel like she left space and you know, like she left Earth's atmosphere, like just moving beyond in this moment before her face came through the waters, like I captured her and this strength and this power and energy in the water. Um, and then in my next 
idea, and it was untethered twice bold, where I think naturally a lot of people want to turn their head to the side, like, what is that? <laughs> right? But that orientation makes such a difference because it's like a portal or she's stepping through something. And her hands that become like these roots and her strength run through her. Beautiful. I love that. I want to talk a little bit about the use of darkness, dark colors, and negative space, and kind of thinking about that negative space as actually a space for generative thought and healing and the catharticism that you are alluding to when you speak through how your art practice helped you deal with and respond to what was happening and what is currently happening in our world politically. Can you talk a little bit more about that use of dark color and how you think of it as a grounding point to be able to think of a newer future, a different future, um, a brighter future? Well, for sure. I'm, I'm hoping that the um, thinking of darkness is not necessarily a negative. And even in the place that we're in right now, maybe this is a time of reset. Maybe this is what we all need to think and reconsider. Like, if I was just using a limited example of women's rights, it's like, okay, you took them away, now I want more. Now you're gonna make me think about what I didn't have, now I want more. You know, and I'm hoping this agency of these female figures will make others want more and want it for themselves and push themselves, push themselves further. And I think we need these moments of pause for that. So it is good. There is hope in that. And that's what I want to convey. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. I'm thinking a bit now about this body of work and the things that you've shared with us about the impact of Roe v. Wade on you. And what are some of your thoughts about the function and purpose of art and potentially of your art and this particular body of work? What do you want it to do? What do you want it to say or leave people with when they see it and experience it? I want them to feel something. I think art is something that distinguishes us from animals. I mean, but maybe there are, you know, scientific data of some art, animals making art too, so I don't know. But um, I think, you know, you when you can look at something and it can express an emotion that you that is inside of you and can trigger new thoughts and feelings and ideas. Sometimes you need a visual. I know a lot of people use music to empower them, but sometimes a visual can also spark something inside. And I definitely use art as a means to get out energy, um, express a lot of my frustrations, um, a lot of my work. Um, when you get to the under layers of it is pretty dark, but um, I'm trying to make something beautiful out of that. And, um, but art itself, I think everyone has their own purpose with it or use of it, but I would say that would be mine. Yeah, I want to go back to what you just said about the ideas, and what I'm pulling on is the ideas of beauty. And you mentioned something in the video that you have with Lehman Maupin about being challenged to express something that's quite difficult through beauty, that, that is a, that's the challenge, right? How do you convey something that's very serious, that's very deep, but in a beautiful way so that there's an entry point? Can you speak a little bit more about the idea of beauty as a way to open up dialogue about something that's very difficult? Yes. Uh -huh. um. Like there's one painting I have in the light of Stefan Clark, that young man that was killed in Northern California. Um, I painted him in a way with his arms stretched out and people could easily look at him and see a boy with his forehead, you know, um, scrunch with sunlight. It could just look like a beautiful day. But I put um, like, I saw the autopsy report where the bullet holes hit him and I put galaxies in all these spaces and it's like 
I'm okay with someone looking at my work and just seeing something that looks visually beautiful and walking away because I don't necessarily wanna live with looking at pain. Um, and it does bring it in further if someone asks a question, why is that there? Then you can give them that, you know, but it, water itself is, to me, very beautiful and alluring. And so I think in a way, it, as a trickster, I can get anyone to come and look at something that's, oh, that's so beautiful. And then if you want to know what the third, further thought behind it, there's, there's something else there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would like to back up a little and talk about the title of the show, A Certain Oblivion. Can you share with us the meaning of that for you and why you chose this title? Well, I guess it's kind of an oxymoron, I guess, right? I'm certain I don't know what is going on out here. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain I feel like I'm in a dream and this does not seem right. <laughs> Get me out. And so... That's the one thing I know. <laughs> and so that's why it's my title. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I'd like to go back a little bit to water as its own subject matter and kind of thinking about the way water opens up dialogue, starts a conversation and can spark new thought. Can you talk a little bit about how, how and why depicting water in the ways that you do is important to you? Well, it puts another layer to the work. Um, I think of water is my life's metaphor, where um, it is something that is overwhelming, strong, like it could, it's dangerous, and at the same time, if you can relax and release, you will float, right? And if you tense up, you will sink right down those you know like and so it's not about being passive in any way of letting go in this you know something overwhelming but something about like breathing in and out and taking those waves as they come and I remember when I was doing a swim class and um, I would swim with my head up and I realized when you're swimming with your head up, your body, your head's up, your feet go down and you're going against the water. But if you, the instructor kept saying, put your face further in the water. And it goes against all my instinct. But if you go further, your feet lift. And if, your feet, if you go down and your feet lift, you float. And so sometimes when you're in something and it seems scary, just push further in it. And then you can and you'll be okay. You'll get yeah. through it. You'll get through it. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more deeply about the paradoxical nature of water. It's turbulent, yet tranquil. It's clear, yet hidden, and how these contrasting elements support the ideas in your show. Would you maybe expand on that, that concept, like the, the dual nature of water? Um, wait, say that one more time. <laughs> So I, I think that one of the things that you're illustrating and alluding to is that there's this hidden, there's this aspect of water that there's duality. Mm -hmm. And how do you see the duality of water sort of making its way into the show? In this one, okay. Um, well, definitely this dark water is this hidden space you can't see where we're going. Like I said, with the title, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and there's something about night, water that is scary You're like you can't see what's in there you can't see what's happening and at the same time it's beautiful <laughs> and when the light hits that black water it's like crystallizing and I don't know I just felt like it was a space and place that I wanted to explore with my work and my practice it allowed me to push painting a little further, like I kept, you know, I didn't, I, I never thought about it before until I was painting it. Why I don't see a lot of black paintings? Because it's hard to paint. I never, <laughs> never thought of that. I had to cut off all my lights because if you put a light on it and the black paint is wet, it just makes a shine, right? So you can't see it. 
So then when I was trying to do subtle motions in the, in the blackness of color, they're so close to black, I couldn't even see the different colors on my palette with my lights off, right? So it was like I had to be intuitive and trust myself, and I add a little green, a little bit more, and believe it's gonna get lighter and wait for it to dry, and then turn on the lights. And that was fun too. It was like, ooh, I could do it. <laughs> but it was also hard, and, I, and it was, you know, challenging. Yeah, I mean, I think you're pulling up so many points for me. And something that happened when I was here at the opening is I was talking to a fellow artist, and we were, and I was like, so what do you think of the show? And he was like, well, I really love the dark works. And I was like, well, tell me why. And he's like, well, it's hard to paint dark paintings. It's hard to give them contrast. It's hard to give them depth. It's hard to, for you to really kind of understand how far you can push color, right, when you're working with just one or two colors. But you realize how far you actually can. And I think that that is a testament to what you've done in the show. So it, it, it brings me to the question of how did you challenge yourself in this new body of work how, as, as far as painting and, and those technical aspects that you're speaking about? Oh yeah, that was, that's what, you know, I really do like challenging myself. Um, they look a lot different than my previous work. Um, that aspect, painting with the darkness, um, Keeping her face blurry was hard for me. I wanted to like tighten it, but I was like, no, I want it to look like she's in motion. So even her lips look blurred. You know, that was important to me, that motion. <laughs> and then even when I painted my daughter Sienna over here, it was like her hand moving, that motion where you can see the the movement was important. I've never, you know, done it like that. And that was really fun to challenge myself. And then even the transparency of the dresses. You know, her dress has like these, it, I love that the fabric, you could see through it. It made me think of these transparent boundaries that are everywhere. Even state lines are transparent boundaries. It, it, you know, everything, like where girlhood Everything is just made with these lines and definitions that don't kind of exist until society creates them. And I thought a lot of that when I was creating this work. Yeah, I mean, I keep thinking about all of the incredible layers that your work has, all of the context, all of the ideas underneath something that's, again, as I said, very beautiful. And thinking about beauty as you're not always understanding that something that's really beautiful may hide a lot of pain behind it, may hide a lot of difficulty behind it. And it's not something that we always talk about in our society. You see a beautiful person, you see a beautiful place, a beautiful setting, you have no idea what's behind there. So I really want to talk a little bit about the painting where you, in a subtle way, have the 13 trigger states. I believe it's this one here. Yes. Yes. Can I, we talk a little about that? At the bottom, within that murky water, are the 13 trigger states that happened when um, Roe was overturned. So Louisiana, if you, now that you look, I didn't want anyone to feel like, like, where's Waldo? Where are the, you know, now, now we're all gonna do it, right? Like, where are they? I need to find them. But they're all in there, but I flipped them upside down and sideways and here, and then I, you know, loosely got rid of those boundaries and spaces all, you know, throughout. But I wanted it recognized, you know, I wanted it, there and my girls, who are symbols of all girls, are just floating above it and going into this abyss away from that. I wanted my daughter to be looking down at us <laughs> <laughs> for having to deal with this and her older sister carrying her through. And that sisterhood can help us, you know, get through anything. Absolutely, love that. I want to center back on something that we talked about a little bit earlier and kind of dig deeper into it. I really want to hone in on this concept that you are taking audiences on a journey with these 10 paintings. Could you sort of slightly walk us through maybe what the experience is like in the beginning of the show and what happens when you come here? Well, we played with light. It was brighter in the front room and a little darker, more evening um, lighting in this room. Um, I almost feel like these works are the precursor for the ones out there. My little girl gets her dark dress out there. She gets her agency and strength, and she looks like she can fight. 
<laughs> <laughs> on a basic level. <laughs> um, it was really fun to play with that day and night you know, and thinking of it in that way, night water and day water and what you see on the outside versus what's underneath it all. Um, and this work here has a much older feel. You know, it looks like 18th century paintings, you know, like, you know, but in the, in, in the front is a little, definitely more contemporary. Yeah. We also spoke previously about, you know, old masters, old Renaissance painters and some of the style that you may be pulling inspiration from here. And I also just want to ask a little bit more about this particular piece. It's the only circular piece in the show. It's quite large, very dynamic. Can you tell us a little bit more about this one? Well, like I said, it's my angry painting, but it doesn't have to be angry for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just a really fun thing as an artist to do. I've never painted a circular painting. Um, I took it on as a very beautiful personal challenge. Um, I, I mean, physically when I was painting it, I, I had it in one space and then I would just rotate it and, and go around. Um, there's a lot of coppers and gold and um, silver iridescent paint throughout. I just wanted it to look like motion, see the foam, see the bubbles. I want someone to look at it from afar and close. There's a lot of details that I just feel like you could see the air in the water. You could see movement. You could see growth. You could see potential, and you can see other things. You know, if I was a witch, I'm going like yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> see I all my it. fantasies here. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I think this is a perfect segue to talk a little bit about making the work, the ideas of the flow state, and the ideas of some of the sensations that you experience making the work. And so, just backing up a little, can you talk to us about some of the first works that you made in this show? Where were you? What was the setting? What was happening? Like, what's the first work you made for this show? Which one was the first? I know the, the black ones were, was it this one? I don't know. There's Amy over there. Hi, Amy. So, <laughs> sorry. <for you. laughs> Often, while I'm painting, Amy, Cheryl, and I will text and talk and FaceTime. Oh, I love that. I think she's <laughs> telling me. I think the one of my daughter over here was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Had to check in with Amy. Just Had to, to check sure. in. Where, where was it? <laughs> but looking at, um, well, I did all of the photos and like at first, and I'm picking which ones will come. Sometimes it changes at the end. Um, as I'm going or looking at one piece to the other. But um, I believe that one over there with Wings of Infinity was one of the first ones. And I felt like she was like in motion where you can't feel if she's in space or water, which does feel like time travel. You are on a journey of this motion. And it made me think a lot of like a hummingbird fluttering above it all and thinking about this symbolic motion, you know, in, of different cultures with hummingbirds and her movement. And um, yeah, that was probably one of the first ones. I asked that question because I'm really thinking about the personal experiences that you had while making the work. What were some of the sensations that you had? What were some of the things going through your mind? And yeah. Well, when I was painting this one, I kept reading things about Wisconsin and that state, wait, was it going to go, you know, uh, were they going to have their abortion rights uh, taken away? Or, and um, with that thought in the shadows, I did put the state of Wisconsin underneath her. She's leaping above it. But it was like this bounce. I was thinking about this bounce up and down I emotionally was having. And so I wanted her to look like she's, you know, this fluttering. But... I was trying to make peace with all of this. And what better way than looking at my daughter all day while I'm painting it? <laughs> so beautiful. I love that. Hi. <laughs> we had a few conversations previously about um, your creative process and a few ideas about the flow state. 
I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what that's like for you. Can you describe a little bit more of your creative process and what happens when you're in that flow state, hours go by and you look up and you know, you've been in the studio 12 hours. Yes, flow state is real and I love it. Um, I usually get there through books though. I try to find really great audio books and then when I am in there and I got a book, I don't even realize three hours have gone by. I get into the story, I hear it, I'm looking at images and my hand is going. I um, have a reference with a screen, I'll look at it and paint, but sometimes it goes beyond that. The examples, like the one untethered, twice bold, it probably looked like a hand in the photo. <laughs> but then when I was just going, it just felt like the paintbrush became intuitive. And that's when I started thinking of roots and went further into the skin and history. And that is the strength that you hold to get through things. And you just let your paintbrush go and you don't realize it necessarily. If I'm thinking about every motion I'm doing, I don't know, I, it wouldn't work. I have to be you know, in a story or someplace else. Sometimes it's music, but often stories help me go away. And especially ones that are connected to the subject matter. That's making me wonder, and it's slightly different, I write, um, but, and it's obviously very different than painting, but it is creative. And I find that sometimes for me, I can only do the work when I'm not actually doing the work because I have to think about it. Do you have that experience as well? Yeah, like in the shower. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of ideas come when I'm in the shower. I'll just sit there for a long time. My husband will be like, are you coming out? And I'm like, no, <laughs> in my head, I'm working on a painting. <laughs> I can see it, <laughs> you know, but yeah, there's other moments when I'm doing something else, it comes through. The ideas or pushing something or yeah, in a car sometimes. Oh, beautiful. I asked that because I believe this is the painting where you shared with me a reference to Rodin, Gates of Hell, right? Yes. And that is a sculptural work. Yes. This is a painting. They're very, very different, but yeah. you pull little bits of things, inspiration that culminates into something even more magical, more beautiful and completely unique. Yeah, yeah. I thought of the undulation of like the body parts coming out of the, mm. out of the, the door, and it, you know, it. That's what was happening in the arms, or just because of the orientation, she's they're coming out, you know, just like that, but in a different way with paint, and it. You know, I saw the connection. I want to turn a little bit to the subjects in your paintings, your your daughters and then think a little bit more expansively about young girls and young women everywhere. What do you want to say to them with this work? Because you're saying so much, truly. Um, don't give up hope. Don't succumb to seeing so much dark information at all times and believe you don't have power or agency. You there, you know, there's a painting out front, the one that you're walking out, the titles, cause all's not lost, you know, and her fists are up. It goes back to me for that, that journey that I keep centering on. It's something that is really grounding me with the show. I think about, 10 pieces in the, in the show. I think about this room as a potential starting point. You walk in and you are somewhere else, but by the time you come here, you're at the beginning, right? And when you leave, you're at the end of the journey where there's light, where there's hopefulness, where there's potentially transcendence, but that has been birthed out of this darkness. How have your children responded to the work? <laughs> I think they're excited. <laughs> I think they're excited. I think it makes them feel good to be seen. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I think they, I don't know. <laughs> have, have I think they, they said, like Have they said, Mommy, I really like this one. This I is think, a favorite. I think they're like, that, yeah. you got me, Mom. Yeah? Okay. That looks like me. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I think as we wrap, 
the conversation and maybe with a final question. Is there anything you'd like to leave with the audience today? Maybe a thought, a feeling, um, anything? Keep hope alive. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Go vote. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. This was lovely. So happy to have you here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.